apostles and the elders a great millstone. Yeah, make sure everything is everything is on. All right, uh, change. You know, uh, we're about to move into another another phase. Uh, we are moving to, to a different phase. War. All right. War is the uh, let's say the second war was passed. The third war will come quickly. All right. The brink of World War Three is the final war that's going to change the end of Esau's kingdom. All right. Which is America, different EU powers, the money system, all going to change. All right, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it, it that follows. All right, so we know we got to spiritually prepare ourselves for the uh, like the Mad Max world, like I call it, the Mad Max world. Because uh, I tell you, in the last uh, in, the, in those, those days, hearts failing them for fear. So we know that the transition from Esau's world to uh, the uh, martial law concentration camps, implant microchip to third world's war to the kingdom of heaven is going to be rough all right it says the righteous scarcely going to be saved all right, so what, 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 what's going to isaiah 13. yeah or read that book. isaiah 13 of 1 it says the burden of babylon which isaiah the son of Mo amos did see it says lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain exalt the voice unto him the high government the, the, the top government on the earth which is esau edom here in america and he has his different uh, satellite uh, states, the uh, client states, uh, EU nations, all right, which together they, they make up the beast in the book of Revelation, all right, and this high mountain is, is America, all right, and the, the whore, which is the whore also, all right, that rideth on the beast, all right, so it's uh, the whore and it's a part of the beast also, all right, but, yep, it says lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Yeah, which the banner is the scriptures, the, the of course, Pro, the... Yeah, prophesying, prophesying, yeah, prophesying. prophesying that uh, the sins of this kingdom, we got the sun, yep. give me the uh, red dragon, you got the red dragon or no? Uh, we don't have that. Nah. Uh, uh, we can just put the uh, 66 uh, chip and all that. The uh, give me the 66 chip. Uh, yeah. Good, good. Uh, substitute. All right, the... Uh, yeah, this is a uh, sin. Take this implant as a sin. All right, continue to read. It says, Exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. Yeah, and tell them what? Tell them, tell them uh, the, or the, uh, the people about the uh, prophecy. Spirit of prophecy, Revelation 19, I believe. All right. That's, that's our main job is to talk about prophecy, not debate about how uh, the other apostle was talking about uh, debating about whether the the tri the, the three the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whether they're the same people. You know? That's not the main subject. They're different, okay? They all emanate from the the, the most high, Yahweh. But that's not really the main subject. The main subject is who the kingdom of heaven for, who's gonna be saved, who the Israelites are. Those are the main topics. Alright, not the three and one, the triune God. Like that's like a uh, it's important, but that's not the main subject. Alright? Read. It says, Isaiah uh, 13 and 3, I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. Uh, angels, powers. Uh, it says, verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people. Yeah, that's the third world's war. All right, the, uh, the armies being gathered together, whether it be people, artillery, uh, missiles. All right. Technology, sound of the multitude. Good. It says, yep, Isaiah 13 of 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord Yahweh of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. Yeah, the host of the battle, they're going to be gathered there in the Middle East. That's what's so called Middle East. All right, over there in uh, Arabia, the Levant, that area right there between uh, Mediterranean and the Euphrates. All right, that's where the, the, ho the hosts are, are going to be mustered, meaning they're going to come together. All right, for, for war. All right, and it's going to be the east against the west. It's Russia and their allies. 
All right, they're going to respond. They're going to wipe uh, the state, the, 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 the Khazar J's. They're going to wipe that area clean. All right, and that's going to be the end. That's going to be the very end. All right, and they're going to wipe uh, Babylon America clean. That's going to be the very end. But in the midst of that, you're going to have a war. A different type of missiles firing, uh, 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 soldiers, artillery clashing. And then the end of it is going to be uh, total incineration of the Levant and Babylon America. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, what? The uh, scripture speak about um, basically Armageddon. Armageddon in the Hebrew. Yep. yep. In the Hebrew, it's Armageddon, which means mountain of the troops. And that's going to go down in the Middle East over there. It says Isaiah 13 and 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord Yahweh, and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Yeah, it come from the east. Come from uh, all the powers that have nuclear weapons. All right, with the east, they're gonna come from the east to the west. All right, and just totally destroy the whole land, which is a, a Babylon America was referring to. Uh, God says. Isaiah 13 and 6 How ye for the day of the Lord Yahweh is at hand It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty yeah, Destruction from the Almighty All right. So we know that a great land mass A great kingdom is going to be destroyed All right. It's not talking about a small kingdom It's talking about a great kingdom That destroyed the, the sons of Israel All right. That's the key All right. so, the, so that was what? America North Central and South America was conquered by the Edomites, and their base is America. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Also, I want to get that word for destruction within the Hebrew. It's the Hebrew word shud, which means havoc, violence, destruction, devastation. And then it literally says, as a destruction from the Almighty. So we just got that word for uh, destruction, which in the original text is kashad meaning as a destruction. And for the word for Almighty, it's Ma Shadia, which literally means from the Almighty. But when you get that word for Shad, it's destruction. So literally, Ma Shadia, or Shadia, meaning literally from the destroyer. Because we know the scriptures, what, the uh, Almighty also goes into Al Shadia, which means demon-like power. But when you actually go into that word destruction, or Shad, it can literally mean destruction as well. Spoiler. Yeah, like like uh, elders and apostles going into uh, uh, not Yah, uh, Wa, Yahawa, uh, means to breathe. Uh, Yahawa means uh, he, Yah, and Wa, Yahawa, Hawa means uh, present. When you break it down farther, it means like to breathe, breath. You know, because to exist, you know, you have to uh, breathe. Yeah. yeah. All right. So go. Ahead. Yeah, so that's really what that word shad means. Ashadia meaning literally the destroyer. But even, you know, uh, of course, look at the most high as like a demon like power. That's what Al Ashadia means. But well, yes. Uh, yep, yep. Isaiah 13 and 7. It says, Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Another, their faces shall be as flames. Yeah, because they know they're going to die. They're going to be afraid, like it says in the uh, Ezra. But yet uh, they're going to be afraid. But yet they're going to fight because they know they have to fight. They have to because they stand up. I think they, I heard somewhere that the American army is, I think, four hundred fifty thousand or something like that. So, relative to the other nations' armies combined. That's nothing. So they want to use other, uh, you know, missiles, artillery, th things of that nature, to, 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 to be able to combat the enemy in the east. All right. So America's weak. All right. And our uh, salvation is in Yahweh Shai, because this whole land is going to be destroyed. And the only way we're going to make it out of here is on by our faith and by our works. Right. And that's given to us by by the Father. Yeah. What? It says Isaiah 13. Well, really, it was really Yahweh shot. All right, but you know he got that blueprint from Yahweh. Right? I remember the scriptures do say the author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Lord Yahweh cometh, 
cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. That's the day of the Lord, God. To lay, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Yeah, that, and that's what the reason why Babylon America is going to be destroyed, because it's a simple kingdom. Right? It was meant to be uh, raised up for a while and then be destroyed. That's the Lord's program. Yeah, good. It says, verse 10, or Isaiah 13 and 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not get their light. Yep. The sun shall be darkened and is going forth. Yeah. And the moon... Yeah, because the, uh, the, the nuclear fire is going to black out the sky. And the earth is going to reel to and fro like a drunkard. All right? So that's describing the, the actual uh, sunlight being blocked out because of, of how much uh, uh, smoke and fire is going to be inflamed in America and around the world. Just because of, of America is going to be, uh, it's going to like, it's going to like pollute the whole earth. Right? Right. God, it says, the sun shall be darkened and is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Right. Verse 11, and I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Now I will punish the world for their iniquity. Right. Meaning... They're going into slavery, all right? Some of them are going to be destroyed by the nuclear fire, others by earthquakes and, uh, and other fires, all right? That's how they're going to be punished. And then the nations, if you're not an Israelite, you're going into slavery. Every single one of them. If you're not an Israelite, you're going into slavery. What? It says, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Yeah, and they, we'll... yeah, they're going to be humble. They're going to be humble in that day. Right now, they're proud. They, they, they have the technology. They, they have the... Uh, the money, they have control of resources through war, through technology, all right? But during that day when the Lord returns, he's going to humble. Everybody's going to bow to, to, uh, to Yahweh Shah's feet, all right? That's how you know all the kingdoms are wicked. They're not following Yahweh Shah. They're not following the God of the Bible because it says down with uh, Daniel 7, I think, all the beheld and all the thrones were cast down. It don't mean besides America, besides Caucasian-looking nations. No, all the nations are going to be bowed down and serve the Lord, all right? And they're going to be forced to do it. It's not like they're willing. But that's that scripture don't say they were, they were willingly doing it. They're going to be forced to bow down and serve Yahweh Shah. So America can't have the truth. The Christianity that's taught here in America and Europe and, and plantation Christianity will be learned you know, why our ancestors were in slavery. That's not the real uh, uh, how you're supposed to, to, to teach and learn the scriptures. Because if it was, they would have said except for America or except for uh, Babylon and Greece. Or except for a certain nation. You know, all, of, all the kingdoms of the earth are going to bow down and serve Yahweh Shah. All right, so you, all, all for that, you automatically know that the, 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 the Bible is not being taught correctly, but saved by the prophets, all right, that are in Babylon and scattered throughout the earth. All right, go ahead. Uh, real quick, I got it. Let me finish that there, 13 off. Right now? No, no, get your oh. precept. Gone. So, real quick, I have Revelation 19 and 11. Yeah. It says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, the white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Right, in righteousness. All right, so that is the, the point that Yahweh Shah is not coming back for peace. Because you have what Matthew said, think that I am coming, or Luke, think that I am in the Gospels, think not that I am coming to send peace on earth. Okay, think not. So you got, so all these Christians talking about something, to, he's the prince of peace, which he will be after he subdues the nations. All right, but he's coming with war. All right, that's what the scriptures say. That proves that these anti-Christians don't know the scriptures. It tells you he's coming back for war, and through that war, he's going to, he is going to bring peace at the uh, annihilates the power, the mountains, the high mountains, the little mountains of all the nations, and raise Israel up. All right, and Israelites rule in Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Yeah. What? Yeah. And the scriptures say when well, Exodus 15 and 3, how the Lord is a man of war. Right? right? So his son is going to be the same exact way, literally a man of war. Yeah, and Yahweh Shah was the one that was there in, in, the, in the spirit, the chariots. Yeah. All right, that followed Israel. That was Yahweh Shah hitting them, shooting them lightnings out and all that. Yeah. And securing Israel. Yeah. And putting, separating the, the light and darkness and, and why Israel would go forward, keeping the Egyptians back. That was the spirit of Yahweh Shah commanding those an, the angels. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I was going to say, you know, you got. Uh, know that the war happening in uh, Israel and uh, Palestine 
Uh, you got these that certain mass shooting that happened in Maine. Maine yep. People believing that you know these people are innocent people that it's happening to. And he but had conveniently been found dead. Apparently. Yeah, yeah. But this is like you know the that the, that's the this is like the appetizer of what's to come from the Lord's judgment, man. Because right. when Yahweh comes back, man, you know it, it, uh, the the stuff that we seen in Israel, right, the stuff that we these Gaza. mass shootings, yeah. all the things and things like that, it's gonna be nothing, man. I right, Job four and seven, man. Yeah. All right, who who perish uh, being innocent? All right, so the Lord is coming, I right, to to execute that judgment. All right, the reason we're in slavery is not it's not because we're innocent. All right, it's because we we went off. All right, we we're serving our judgment, man. We're serving our punishment. All right, and the Lord made it a way. All right, through a remnant, all right, through the elect, for us to come back to Him. All right, and that's how we, and that's how the righteous is going to be saved from from the destruction, man. Yeah, the bride gonna come down out of heaven, which is the Israelites, mm -hmm. the elect, and they're gonna re rebuild through Yahweh Shai. Rebuild the kingdom of Israel, or, or you rebuild Yahweh Shai's kingdom, yeah. which is one and the same. Uh, our name is on is uh, of the Lord. Uh, he's the Prince of uh, Power. He's the Prince of God. Uh, Allah, Hayyam, Allah, he, Yasha, Allah. Right? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. That's yeah. all you have, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bring the scriptures out in a second. Let's uh, finish that. You know, get the, the spirit of prophecy since you were 19. I believe. Uh, so I've gotten at my feet to worship him. See if I'll do it or not. Or I might be making two scriptures up, but when when uh Yahweh Shai said. Oh, okay. Or, verse 10. Or Angel said. Verse 10. Or John said. Or verse 10, go ahead. Let me start verse 9. Huh? It says, Revelation 19 and 9, it says, And he saith unto me, Right blessed. It says, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage. Uh, it says, Supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of the Most High. And I fell out of speed to worship him. So that was an angel, yeah. So the an angel was talking, talking to John. Go up. And, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. It says, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is a spirit of prophecy. All right, so it's all about prophecy. All right. It's prophesied that the Edomites were going to continue to the to the last days, and, they, and the Edomites are going into slavery. It, it's, not, it's not prophesied that you want to have uh, nations that are going to be destroyed. You can't destroy any nation. Now you can break them, well, you can break them up, but you can't wipe them off the face of the earth. Only the Lord, the Most High, can do that. Only Yahweh Shai can do that. No man can eradicate every single man, woman, and child of a particular uh, race, ethnic group. All right. They will always be some of the more because the scriptures, the scriptures say there's no end to all the people. Everything is uh, re recycled. All right, those spirits go back to the, uh, to the father and they come back down. All right. God, it says Revelation 19 and 11. Well, we read it, so we can read it again. It says, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that saw upon him was called faithful and true, and a righteousness. He doth the judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. It says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was ca is called the Word of the Most High. All right, yeah, so you can't, so nobody else is like Yahweh Shai. All right. And that blood represents the same thing as Isaiah 63. Uh, who is this coming from Edom? The dyed garments of uh, Basra. All right. So, you, so there's no other power on earth or, or in heaven like Yahweh Shai. All right. The Son, only begotten of the Father. All right. And He is going to make war with the Edomites, with the other nations. All right. They don't have the power to subdue them. All right. Where it says when uh, uh, Second Ezra six, we don't get that too. You can go, go uh, that's it on that. Go to, uh, back to Isaiah. Uh, uh, Isaiah 13. Yeah. And 11. Well, yeah, we can read 11. It says, and I, and it says, and I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud, the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. It says, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Yeah, because during the, the, the Mad Max time, 
it's going to be it's not going to be safe to be out on the street. You're going to need uh, spiritual power, or you might have to be in some uh, gated uh, community that's protected with weapons and, and tur turrets. I'm saying the right, you know, like machine guns and barbed wire, security cameras. That's how bad it's going to get. Right? So you're going to have to ha have the spiritual power, or you're going to be in hiding deep in the damn woods and know how to survive out there. Know how to you know, make food and survive the different pollutions and the, and the uh, insects, right? or being some damn FEMA region guarded by them. And then, if you went to one of the FEMA regions, they're going to ha have you ID ID because you not you can't be in one of their, in their uh, camps without being ID. Uh, uh, ID. They keep track of you. But that's you saw this new world, new world order system is about control. All right, so they're going to use your system to ID you. And you keep uh, tabs on you, so to speak. All right. So you have to get this mark if you get the uh, benefits from the, your local government, and, and that's this going to come upon the whole world. Right. Con so, Isaiah 13 and 13, or yeah, Isaiah 13 and 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. In the wrath of the of Yahweh of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, it says, "And it shall be as a chaste roe, and and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land." What? Yep. Yeah, they're gonna go back to their own land. All right. So you can't. Uh, a lot of people coming here, you know, for new opportunities and uh, money and everything. But it's going to come a point where people are uh, going to go back to their own land because it's going to be uh, either too dangerous, not profitable anymore. Then you're going to have still other people coming in. And the ones that are coming in are going to be judged. They're being brought here to be judged. Because right? it tells you, well, amongst the Israelites anyway, you got two parts that are in. Babylon and America are going to uh, be burnt up by the fire, nuclear fire. And a third part is going to be brought through that fire. All right, and the two parts is greater than the uh, third part. All right, so you're gonna have a small remnant that's gonna be saved out of America, of Israelites. Everybody else is gonna be uh, totally uh, incinerated. All right, burnt up in a nuclear fire. All right. Here's oh yeah, I was about to say yeah. What um, you know, ever since 2019, you know, I did a lesson on it probably like a year ago or something. You know, basically it said that millions of people who have came here from another land are are now you know literally going back. So how much more when these the, these evils approach Babylon the Great, right? The, I mean, you know the what's it called? Yeah, again, you know, basically the the um, the, the climax of the evils that have to come to this land. So how much more? Yeah. You know that's why Esau is gonna be setting up what them checkpoints and stuff in the cities. You know, basically one man showed desire to go into a city, but you should not be able to. Basically yeah. paraphrasing. Yeah, they already set up these uh, unconstitutional. Uh, DUI tech stops, you know, on highways, you know, in certain cities, certain areas, you know, mainly on uh, you know, major cities, they'll set up blocks and they'll uh, ask you questions. You don't really got to answer their questions. You do what you want to do, <laughs> but you don't got to answer questions. I mean, it's not a lawful stop. Technically, it's not a lawful stop. He's all the devil. He'll make rules and then break the damn rules. All right? Well, says Isaiah 13 and 15 everyone that is found shall be thrust through yeah man you're going, you're going to be put to death by the nuclear fire All right? the nuclear fire is going to have 100% uh, annihilation rate or termination rate 100% nobody if you're still in America when, when the missiles hit which is America's Babylon it's going to be 100% uh, a death rate everyone shall be thrust through so it's not going to be like a remnant or like broken down cities you know, yeah. it looked like Beirut, you know, back when they were getting bombed and going to war. It would look like Gaza. It ain't going to look like that. It's going to be totally uh, dissolved. It's going to be a fire pit. Yeah. Well, also the scriptures say how you saw they're going to seek to hide, you know, within, uh, you know, basically no. underground, the bunkers and stuff. Well, it doesn't matter if you do that because anyways, Yahweh Shai, they're going to send back his angels and also his, what, his 144,000 to literally, you know, get you up out of there. Right. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna be in other countries, you know, hiding in the, the, the caves, 
in the holes. Right? And some of them are going to make it up to uh, in, the, in the space. Okay. So it's not going to be it's not going to be any place where the Lord can't find you because the Lord is omnipresent anyway. The angels are omnipresent. They can exist everywhere at one time. And they can instantly instant transmission, you know? Anywhere at one time. It's just by thought. Yeah, what? Isaiah 13 and 16, there it says, Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Right, yeah, during, during the Mad Max air time, you're going to have uh, different uh, militia groups going around, uh, uh, robbing, robbing a burglar, home invasions, yeah. you know? They take the resources and and to take, take put people in slavery, right? For you know, for, to use them for their for their body and for labor. Right? That's how. That's why you're gonna need spiritual power to survive that day. Then you're gonna have different areas that are gonna be safe, which they're gonna be controlled by the government. Right? Different concentration camps, green zones, so to speak. Right? Well, yeah. Also, yeah, Khan. You know, I I wanted to add, man. This guy, how about Shimi Al Shah? You know, putting out this problem. You know, so basically the Lord is going to cause this to happen. So, you know, people think that the Lord is just a nice, you know, uh, loving God. Nah, man, the, the Lord, I, as I said, Almighty, literally meaning demon-like power, right? You know, a, literally a power of destruction. That's how the Lord's coming, man. Yeah, just like Antiochus Epiphanes said, by peace he shall destroy many. All right, so that same spirit, he's an Edomite, all right? They got the same exact character. Esau was into homosexuality, pederasty. All right, which, which a Roman would have a wife. A Roman could only have one wife. And then he had a little boy, all right, that he had sexual relations with. All right, that same thing in America. They, they, they practice similar uh, culture. That's why it's scripture say they should make an image of the beast. In the book of Revelation 13, chapter, you only have one wife. All right, the Roman system. And then certain of them pe practice, practice the pederasty. All right. They roam all over again as the apostles and elders of the set. All right, same spirit, make an image to the beast. That's America. Same thing as the ancient Roman system. All right, a lot of similarities. All right. Go it says Isaiah 30. And, and their wise ravish you read? Yeah. Yeah, we look up ravish, look up ravish. It means to swerve. Good. I believe it's two words. I'm going to look it up in a while. I'm going to one word. Uh, yeah, so it means that they're actually going to be, for, women are going to be forced, forced on, all right, and it's going to be motion with that force. To swerve. I looked up in a while. Too, so. Yep. Hebrew word shagal or ravish, which means to violate, ravish. It says to uh, copulate with, to lie with. So I mean, literally to to, to ravish. That's yeah. what it means. That's more to it. More. more. Yeah, and also what in the Spanish, you, you got the Spanish word um violar, which means literally to violate somebody, and that that you know that's the word that they use. You know, of course, for R A P E. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they mean to, yeah, to uh, S E X or uh, violate. Right. Yep. Go, go more to the word. Another word. There. Uh, that's about it. That's the root word. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Read the definition again. Gone. So, so to the definition for in their wives ravished. This is why you need a man, a man, a man of the Lord. All right. Not a drug dealer, damn basketball player. Yep. A, a business owner with, with cars and jewels that's all low level old shit yeah. Flat, the flashier you are the stupider you are uh, you got, I've seen people having re revelations about you know they used to do that and then now they, they uh, consolidating their shit now because it's, yeah. it's stupid you know it's kind of immature wearing the chains and shit getting had like eight cars and you just had two or three right yeah man yeah. and uh you, you proud women you know saying you don't need a man or um, you know have these very High unrealistic and, uh, expectations. You know, don't want to go to uh, you know cheesecake factory and all that yeah, other bullshit. Right. You know, and during that that's, day, that's not even a cheap place, right? Yeah, that's not, it's, 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 it's like, like middle it's grade. like in the middle. Yeah. It's like in the middle. You know, it's not the cheapest, but it's not the most expensive. But you know, things like that. I, it was like a list that said uh, places women oh, don't yeah. want to go on the first date. Which yeah, is yeah like, find that list. Find you, that yeah, list. you can. <laughs> yeah, like find that spot. list. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. during that day. You know, the, the bummiest fucking nigga on the street 
you know, you're gonna wanna you gonna wanna deal with that man, right? Because yeah. you're gonna need you're gonna need a man. Yeah, you're gonna go to yeah, the yeah. man and both of y'all gonna get destroyed. Yeah, right. Like you got a lot of uh <laughs> bums and crackheads, you know, you're gonna be with, with, with niggas like that, man. Mm, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, protect me, protect me. Begging <laughs> to learn the laws, like you gotta let somebody gotta, gotta learn the laws and law. You just follow our instructions. Uh, first Corinthians eleven and one. All right? Yep. But they 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 don't know. So they they're ignoring the world now, but in that day you're gonna be behind the eight ball. Where you could have been, been building up a foundation on the, the, the will of the Lord, what to do, your duties and all that, but now you're going to be scrambling at the last minute because you were proud and, and Cheesecake Factory was too good for you. In places, <laughs> a list of places, first of all, dude, you, those, that woman, on, that was a black woman, right, that was on there? Yep. yep. With the list on the, on the side, she don't yep. even qualify for uh, a decent man. She qualified for a thug, a drug dealer, a scammer, a, a piece of shit. That's what they qualify for. Everybody that agree with that list, those are the men they qualify for. Men, uh, dudes that can't pull, pull their pants up, yeah. they don't wear, go outside, don't wear belts. That's who women like that qualify for. All right? Yeah. Coke dealers, and yeah. they get arrested in six months, or they they, uh, they live a life uh, in danger, they can't really go outside, you know? They gotta constantly look, looking over their shoulder and shit. Yeah. But, I found that list, by the way. Yeah, kind of go ahead, uh, go on to it. Yeah, it's a... It's a heading, yeah. Yeah, it say here's a list of places women absolutely refuse to go on the first date. Right, and if you agree with this list, that means you're right for uh, destruction. You're right. You're right. You're right to be uh, the, the Isaiah 13 chapter to happen to you. Uh, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yep. All right. And, and say and thank you to to the ladies who reached out to me to help me on the, on my list. All right. So we're gonna read read the list. Have fun with your deal, though. <laughs> okay. Have fun with that, cause all, cause you women that agree with that, dildo, you, 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 you have fun with your dildo, your vibrator, and then you're gonna, <laughs> then you're gonna get a home invasion. All right, and yep. then you're gonna have a, a continual supply of dildos and vibrators <laughs> for the guy that drag you off into the damn basement. Yep. Right? And you work for them for until the fire comes, or somebody break into their gang and destroy yep. them. You got a uh, cheesecake factory, which I remember cheesecake factory used to be considered like a. You know, like a good, spot. yeah, good yeah. place to go to. But now people, you know, women act like it's nasty, and you know they don't like it. Well, the bitches probably can't even cook anyway. Yeah. So they, they, they got to rely on prepared meals. Yeah. So because it's low, it's low level uh, thinking. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was about to say, you know, nowadays they'd be selling, what, you know, Cheesecake Factory breadsticks at, you know, your local store and shit. Okay. Like, yeah. So it's popular. It's a brand. It's a brand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yep. It's a Cheesecake Factory, Applebee's, Chili's, Chipotle, Olive Garden, the movies, your house. <laughs> the movies. <laughs> you should be able to go to the movies on the first day. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> 2001, 2005. You know, you should be able to go to the movies. And then y'all get together after that, and maybe go to like the food court or whatever. Like now, and now you a fucking bum if you do that. <laughs> That's low. Now it's 2023. Y'all, you still you you accept that? Like you should be able to do that. You just yeah, go to the yeah. fucking food court and go to the damn movies. Oh, he dry. Had a 91 five speed Honda Accord. I picked my, my ex up in that. We went to the damn movie in uh, Franklin Mills. It's called Philadelphia Mills now in Northeast Philly. And we got together from there. But now, if, if as soon as I pull up in the 91 Honda Accord back then, you know, she probably wouldn't even get in the car now. Yep. Five speed, I don't know. <laughs> but exhaust leak, I fixed exhaust leak. But <laughs> yep, yep. They, that was, yeah. they, 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 they just act, they look out the window and never come out. Uh, yeah, I'll be, back, I'll be down in an hour. You know, they, they never come the fuck out. <laughs> I was saying, first of all, I ain't waiting no damn hour. The dude was a fucking simp. Yeah, he was, yeah, he, he, hour, man. he need man training. He needs man training. Oh, he, and he talked like a, like a weak person. You, yeah, do, yeah. you wait 15 minutes, then you're gone. Yeah, if, the, if that. She should be ready, waiting the fuck outside, looking down the street, looking for you to fucking come. Which, she yeah. should be on video chat. Right? It's 2023, right? Yeah. Like when you putting your shirt on, you put fucking uh, shea butter or fucking mango butter on or whatever the hell you put on. Yeah, you know, man. communicating and shit. Not oh, I'll be out. In, I, oh, I worked late last night, bitch. I don't give a fuck. You worked late last night. See, these women don't qualify for good, decent men. They qualify for the scammers. Yeah. They qualify. They qualify 
for gangs to, to, to do the home invasions and, and take them to work in their house. Yeah. Not forever until the fire comes. Or another gang come and take they over. Take them over. They rather qualify themselves for the, like Esau or some shit like that, man. Yeah. And like Esau is going to bang them out and get rid of their ass anyway. Yeah. Like 99% every, of them. Like you see on social media, you know, you got the uh, be afraid to black out, woman yeah. with, with the white man and she just, you yeah. know, is, you know, is exalted to him and giving him all this praise and women right. that just say all oh, goals and all this other yeah. madness in the comments. But then when if she was with a, a, a Jake man, you know right. they be they be uh, scoffing, proud, uh, proud. A list of uh, do, the things do better, you gotta do, yeah. This and that. Yeah. He's a bum, you know. Right. But, yeah. uh, That's a dynamic, and that and the Lord did that to punish them. The daughter of Zion and Hophni and Walk check forth, check forth next. That's the curse they under. All right. And the, the Lord going judge them. The Lord got a special. Judgment for the, for the especially for the uh, the Southern Kingdom women, uh, uh, Southern Kingdom yeah. in general, but all but the especially the women, they got a special judgment. The daughter of Zion and Hophni, Isaiah third chapter. Uh, but you could go into that list. Yep, it yep. say your house, any fast food chain, Buffalo Wild Wings, Wingstop. Right, and this is why you should never respect a woman that believes that or agrees with that, because you could own. What if you had a, uh, if you own one of the franchise? Oh, you were yeah, partnered yeah, in one of the franchises, yeah. and then the, she's not good enough to eat at your restaurant at a wing shop. She's not uh, good enough. Yeah. So that's how that's how you never respect a woman that don't want to go to any of those places. Because if you said, "Well, I own a, a couple of wings, wings, wing spots, wing shops. I own a cheesecake factory, and I got a, uh, my cousin has a 70% owner in, in a cheesecake factory. And that's too good for them. They don't qualify. <laughs> yeah. All right, they qualify. You have the ass kissed for a little while, they get banged out and then tossed to the side of the road. That's yep. what they qualify for. Yep. Short term, temporary situations. Alright? So, pretty much, women that agree with that, they pretty much want short term, temporary situations. You shouldn't be pursuing no damn woman. She should like you more than you like her. Alright? You take her out once, maybe twice, then y'all should be in a damn relationship or be having sex or whatever. Y'all shouldn't be doing three, four times. She's trying to figure shit out. You got to raise your interest. I'm not, I'm not into all that shit. All right? Yeah, she got low interest. You got to raise, raise her interest. You got to raise your interest. Up. Not, <laughs> not, if you're a confident, mature uh, hey, man, uh, man, you know, you don't got, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be chasing no damn woman, catering, courting, all that shit. You look, deal with women that had high interest. You do, you do with her once or twice, and then y'all pretty much, y'all figure things out. You like each other. She likes you. Y'all can continue. Y'all can understand each other's intentions. Y'all believe each other's intentions. You either want to do some type of fuck butter situation or they want to like a long term relationship. Y'all yeah. figure the fuck out and then move the hell on. All this courting shit is stupid. And dating goes back to prostitution anyway. Alright? It's not, that's, you ain't supposed yeah. to be fucking dating. Yeah. Technically, yeah. That's, that's prostitution. Yeah. So, These women is high high level uh, prostitutes, man. You know, they right. want to go to uh, Ruth Chris and shit like that. You know, the first date. You know, want, first want of all, you should be fucking date. cooking. You shouldn't be fucking eating in goddamn restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a, a lifestyle you should be into. There's some people into that shit. That's a damn, that's a demon. You want a quick way to stay broke? Keep going to fucking restaurants. All right? Yeah. And the first thing, you know, you, you know, you, a woman come and you, you know, you expect her to cook or clean. They say, oh, I'm, I'm not your mom. Well, that, I'm not. That's it. Those, those women don't qualify for a uh, long-term relationship. Man. They don't qualify for salvation. You know? Your woman should be uh, eager to cook. Eager to start chopping vegetables up, roasting chicken, currying, and stewed chicken, and all that. They should be eager. You should be picking up the groceries. All right. You can pick up the groceries, meet her, bring her back to your spot, and she chop that shit up and cook it. And then be packing meals for you. That's an actual woman. All right. Not, you gotta take her out, y'all go out and eat. That's not a fucking woman. That's a prostitute. That's a woman that's for sale. That's a woman you gotta, you gotta buy. You pay for a woman by you buying the groceries and she hard cooking the food. That's how you pay for a woman. That's how you take care of a woman. Now, you don't pay for a woman by taking the, the fuck out to places and paying money out in the world, making somebody else fucking rich. All right? You want a quick way to stay broke? Keep going to fucking restaurants. Keep eating at restaurants and see how broke you fucking be. Bro, look a look. It's a Wingstop, Red Lobster, a buffet, AHA, Denny's, the gym. No, a lot of these places we're not gonna eat either. But there are a few little places that we would eat. Right? Yeah, like a. I mean, like what's wrong with like a local restaurant? Yeah, like a local, local yeah. decent restaurant. You know, like I know a couple local decent restaurants. It don't gotta be no no chain 
a restaurant, like you know, place like Cheesecake Factory. It could be some some local and, and, and good, man. You know, those those really are the best restaurants anyway. Right. Yeah. So it's a uh, Denny's, the Gym, Church, Starbucks, coffee dates, ice cream dates, family functions, movie nights, in parentheses Netflix, Hulu, and etc. Somewhere that requires a long drive, to bowling, nightclub, hookah bar, ride, uh, a bar just for just drinks and Waffle House. Right. So what did the, the scripture say about our women that the uh, that wife should be a harlot in the city? All right. That wife shall be a harlot in the city. So we know that they require these things because they think they're better than you. Any woman that, that actually believes that you were better than her, and your value is higher than hers, would not be requiring you to take them to a specific place. As long as it's safe and clean, you know how to get in and out of there, and you're a competent, mature man, you, at where you choose, first of all, y'all should, if you don't believe that, y'all shouldn't be together anyway. If you don't think he's a competent, uh, mature man and got his shit together, why the fuck y'all together anyway? Y'all shouldn't even be together. All right? So get that, that prophecy about a wise being whores. Con Amos 7 and 17, it says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, thy wife shall be in the harlot in the city. Right, so that dating shit is this fucking, uh, the stuff is, is either directly prostitute where it comes back, goes back to prostitution. Uh, see if you can find an article on that. I, but finish reading it. See if you can find an article on that. Finish reading that. Dating going back to prostitution. Con. Amos 7 and 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, thy wife shall be in the harlot in the city, and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy land shall be divided by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land. Yeah. So while well, you had those half those prophecies happen at different time periods. Because back then our women weren't prostitutes. Uh, they weren't all promiscuous. All right, but the land was divided by line. But now, during this generation, all right, the, the uh, during slavery, during the hardcore bondage, they became basically for, for sale, passed around by the different uh, slave owners and the different uh, other slaves. All right, and now they just are uh, uh, outwardly practicing it through dating, through um, OnlyFans, through uh, different uh, websites. Webcams, all right. Practicing their uh, prostitution, practicing practicing their promiscuous and whoredom. All right. Read yeah. it again. You found something? Yeah, I, I found an article that's just making a good point on, on the topic. You know? Okay, all right, all right, go on to it. Yeah, it says um, I recently came across a, a podcast where a man asked a group of women what he should do to to get laid on the first date, quote unquote. He doesn't want to waste his precious time giving a woman attention indefinitely or spend his money on her. She won't even put out at the end of the evening. It says, back in the day, the purpose of dating was to find a spouse. Seriously, dating was meant to find someone to marry, build a family with, and love for the rest of your life. It was never about convenient sex without consequences, a free five-star meal, or getting validation for the op opposite gender. But these days, young people seem to only date for the wrong reason. Ladies are dating for the sake of getting cash and prizes in exchange for their company and sexual favors. Men are dating for the sake of getting laid in exchange for their time, attention, and financial support. Here's what it comes down to, money, money for sex. Women want access to a man's financial assets and men want access to a woman's body. So basically that, that's a, a, a transactional, you know? Yeah. These women you know, want you to buy them this or get them this high, high, uh, uh, quote unquote, fine dining establishment, all right, in order for a man to finally, you know, sleep with them, or whatever the case may be, you know? Well, well I looked up uh, dating, that goes back to 1896. Yeah. And uh, date referred to a public courtship when a woman would meet a man publicly rather than privately at a residence or a court. And I said before that, it was more private. Yeah. And and really, you know, if, if everything is in order, all right, you know, it, it, it'll be the, uh, the the father, all right, right, that's in charge of who who the women, who who his daughter, you know, is gonna uh, have as a husband. The, the woman has no control over that, man. All right, it will be it will be the father. I right, he find a suitable man, I right, uh, uh, for his daughter, all right, and then you know whatever agreement they make, 
you know, in order for, for uh, the, the daughter to give, uh, or the father to give his daughter to the man, you know, that would be between them. And then, and then that's how um, a, a man would get a, get a wife, all right? It's not a, it's not a wife, you know, putting all these expectations for the man and, and, and shit like that, man, you know? In the ancient world, women women used used to uh, uh, love their men. You know, just uh, uh, you know their glory was was having kids. You know, raising up their family. You know, things like that. All right. Now it's oh, I got the uh, the, the top man who can get the top with the top resources and things of that nature. All right. So so how women view men and marriage. All right. You know, is is, is completely different from how how they supposed to be thinking about it, man. Yeah, and I got the etymology for the word date. So it goes yeah. back. It says date, meaning the verb. It says have a romantic liaison. And when you get to get that word for liaison, the definition says, getting to the point, it says a sexual relationship, especially one that is secret and involves unfaithfulness to a partner. So hey. You already know, you know, a lot of these women, you know, be cheating and shit, yeah. right? Yeah, this, you know, that, that, that term, uh, look, look up the et etymology of, like, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend or something like that, because that's, that really is not even a thing, all right? Boyfriend and girlfriend, that's just some made-up topic that, that Esau made up, you know, when, you, when you're going around and dating, and you don't, uh, uh, you're not married uh, under, under the state, man, all right? Because once once you have a woman, all right, because it's supposed to go a woman, all right, who who's never dealt with a man before, all right, it's supposed to be, you know, once you sleep with that woman, that's your wife, all right. It's not you gotta do this marriage ceremony and spend all this money and all this, all this and that, all right. All right. But, yeah, yeah, because the women they're pretty much out for themselves to see how much money they can they can make. anything there for that uh, yeah uh, read, 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 yeah read that. first yeah, read that and then, uh, it says boy so get into etymology uh, etymology for the word boyfriend it means favor male companion with implication of a romantic connection it also says a woman's paramour when you get that word for paramour that's a regular definition it means a lover especially the illicit partner of a married person yeah, so yeah. keep in yeah. mind, it says a favorite down. male companion. Yeah. So that's literally what a boyfriend means. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it, it doesn't really make any sense, man. All right. So, so you're going to need a man. So you're going to need a man. Yeah, you're going to need, yeah. So you're going to need a man. All right. And, and when Isaiah 4 and 1 comes, man, all right, a lot, a lot of you women is, is, is going to get exposed in, in for your true nature, man. Yeah. For it to be submissive under a man's authority. Yeah. Anyway, you know, so anyway, man, that's so you know. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, you know, that's going completely up because what the word boy literally means what? It's a, a, a young child, right? A, yeah. a young boy, young right? So if this, you know, if someone's calling you a boyfriend, it's like, you know, some some girl calling you a boyfriend. That's going really assist. That makes no sense. Yeah, it's just, it's just going off, man. Go ahead. Exodus 21 and 10 and say if he take him another wife her food her raiment and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish right, so you can have more than one wife and the Lord never changed that right, when Yahweh Shai came on the earth he never changed that that's in the law and Israel already knew that because it was oral right, Israel already had Israelites already had more than one wife Esau is the one that had to have one wife and then, then uh, practice pederasty on the side yeah. that comes from the Roman Empire all right, but Israelites, we have multiple wives. All right, it's just our women don't respect us in that manner, especially the black women. All right, some of the other tribes may accept it a little bit more, and you know they, they'll still have a problem with it, and they'll still fight, they'll still break it with it too. Yeah. But the black woman is the number one woman that we absolutely will not tolerate. All right, only save unless you have a lot of money yeah. or stat or status. That's a lot of money. Then they'll accept it. They'll still be pissed off about it. You know, they might even try to sabotage you. Uh, yeah. But, you know, a, a situation will be a little different. You got money to sabotage. Yeah. 
which it, it, it kind of used to be like that in the in the ancient world but the difference is all right it, it was because of the more money or status you had as a man all right you had the means to have multiple yeah, your women, you know yeah. your father, and, father would give you know was like you had a wife already so can you take care of the other other woman my, my daughter yeah, yeah so then if you were if you had money you had you were well to do you know you would do that and if the father didn't think so then he would wouldn't uh give you a give her a way to marry to you that. Yeah. And they would be within your tribe, your neighborhood, you know? You marry, you should marry each other within your tribe, within your uh, region in which you live. You know? Close, close relative, or close family member, all right? Yep. And, and say, uh, verse 11, and if he do not these three unto her, then, sh then she, then shall she go out free without money. Yeah, food and raiment. Okay, I meaning food and clothing. I mean, you buy the groceries, all right, or you give her the money to, for her to buy the groceries, and she, you know, chop it up and cook it and all that. And clothing, all right, which means uh, local neighborhood stores, uh, online, nothing hot, and got nothing, nothing, nothing about Louis Vuitton or name brand clothes. All right, food and raiment. They didn't say it got to be a certain brand, it got to cost a certain amount. All right, women that think opposite of that they're not qualified for salvation and they're not qualified to serve the lord they're there doing the serving satan it's only women that understand uh the will of the lord are going to be saved only the only those women all right so if you're into all the the brands and all that shit, the lord going to destroy you if you went to all of the high-end cars that it's a have to be you have to have it all right you're going to be destroyed you're going to die here in babylon all right some women won't deal with you because just because you drive a certain car. Yeah, you drive an economy car. You drive a Toyota. Yeah. You drive a Honda. You got to drive a Hyundai. You might have a uh, SUV or a compact sedan or a full size sedan. All right. Yeah. You, got, you, you have to have a Mercedes. You got to have a higher end Lexus. Yeah. All right. You got to have an Audi. You know. And if yeah. they're not sure, then they're gonna run away. Oh, I, don't, I can't. I can't put this guy out. Oh, gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I don't know about the job. I don't know how much that take. That means I can't. I can't figure it out. Well, she, she gonna get the fuck out of here. These are the women that are going going to be uh, not delivered. They're not gonna be. Delivered. Right. Simple as that. Yeah. Cause a woman, you know, that, that, a, a woman will uh, uh, leave you for for anything nowadays, man. Every you could be doing everything right. She could like, oh, you trying to, uh, you trying to Toyota? Uh, oh, uh, you know, he's he's not, uh, you know, quote unquote, pleasing me uh, sexually or, you know, any, anything like that. You know, a woman will find a way to be promiscuous, man. You know, and, and, and date other men, deal with, a, deal with a whole bunch of men. All right. So, yeah, I got the article. Con, so it says dating rules vary from country to country. Read the header. Oh, the header. So it says the history of dating and romance. So going into this article, kind of getting to the point, it says dating rules. Uh, it says dating rules vary from country to country. That is why Russian dating di differs from the American or Western European dating culture. It says we decide to gain insight into the evolution of romantic relationships and trace its history back to the 19th century. It says you might be or it says you must be interested why a romantic meeting with a person you like is called a date the word first appeared in a newspaper article at the end of the 19th century it was used in the meaning of the date on the calendar when a person has a romantic uh how do you pronounce that romantic yeah it says the date on the calendar when a person has a romantic rendezvous it says there was it says uh there wasn't such a thing as dating 200 years ago there you go that's the point <laughs> there wasn't a the such a, there wasn't a such thing as dating 200 years ago because that stems in prostitution yeah. when women became more free that's when this dating thing came on the scene all right and i did a, a lesson on marriage you know and it goes back to the roman empire greek or roman empire you got, you got women thumbs down in the video because they basically wanted to have you tied to the state they wanted to bind you in the contract of the state with the government all right these are women that's not going to be not, not going to be delivered 
they're gonna be they got a hundred percent destruction reason. Alright? Because they don't understand the scriptures. They don't understand what the war of the Lord is. The war of the Lord is not for you to bind yourself with the state, with the damn woman. Alright? You're binded to the woman. You are the Lord and Master. Uh, she should be catering to you, worshiping you. You're the king, you're Lord. Alright? If she don't respect you like that, she, she might be destroyed. She's very, it's very likely that she's going to be destroyed. She don't think of you like that? Even if she don't like your ass, she got to respect you. Alright? So it says, there wasn't such a thing as dating 200 years ago since marriages were arranged by parents. It says they were interested in the financial status of a would-be bride or groom because they wanted that marriage to benefit their whole family. Things changed in the early 1900s when gentlemen became the ones who initiated a, rel a relationship. A gentleman, or I said, yeah, um, a gentleman would come to a lady's house where their first date took place. A woman was necessarily accompanied by a chaperone their further dates were held in the same way until Remember, they... These are Edomites. These are Caucasian uh, Khazars, uh, cave people. Yep. Uh, they came out the caves, clean themselves up, shave some of their hair off, and then they, they make it, uh, they make it change in the nature of uh, family and relationships. Remember, these are Edomites. All right? Jake's didn't start, start this shit. Yep. Yep. It says a woman was necessarily accompanied by a chaperone their further dates were held in the same way until they felt a romantic interest in each other. After that, a man proposed to a woman. It says, at the outset of the 20th century, women could be arrested for dating. Men walking in the streets with women. Yep, read that again. It says, out the, it says uh, at the outset of the 20th century, women could be arrested for dating. Men, uh, why? Why? Because prostitution. If you, if your uh, country or area did not uh, legalize prostitution, then this was more than likely a thing. You could be arrested for, for dating. All right. Look. So it says at the outset of the uh, the twentieth century, women could be arrested for dating. Men walking in the streets with women, buying them food and flowers, were a new phenomenon. So the authorities didn't know how to react. It says it resembled prostitution so much that they could call, that they could charge women with it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, we thought I was always bullshit when we said dating goes back to prostitution. Dating goes back to prostitution. Now, give me the law of marriage. Uh, show a guy him to be his wife. Uh, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, endow. Exodus 22 and 16. Exodus 22 and 16. Let's look at Exodus 22 and 16. It says, And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her. Yeah, entice meaning what? Talk to, look up entice. Okay. Like persuade, I believe that means, right? That's how you're supposed to get a wife. Alright? This is the, the normal way to, to, to get a wife now. Alright? It can be arranged by the parents, or it can be this one. You can meet, meet, meet a woman in public, talk to her, you like each other, and say, you know, I want you to be my wife. Entice. Yeah, that word entice uh, comes off. It's saying, to be spacious, be open, be wide. Uh, to make spacious, make open. To be simple, entice, deceive, persuade. To be open-minded, be simple, naive. Entice, deceive. To be deceived, be gullible. Yeah, it means to persuade. Right. They say to persuade, you seduce. Might, yeah, you might even lie to. Yeah. You know, say you got something that you don't have. Yeah. You know, so a man entice a maid. Yeah, read scripture. Yeah. Oh, you got more? They say to persuade, seduce, you know, women like to be seduced, you know, to, to, to deceive, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. That's yeah, and she might do this, nowadays, she might do those things to you, Yeah. you know, yeah. and, you know, stare at you, be what they call it, choosing signals or whatever, 
side, yeah. You know, and then you go over and then you make the approach, or she might even approach you. In that in the day, in the, during the Mad Max time, women are going to be approaching you. I already seen it in the vision. It's going to happen. They're going to be begging you <laughs> to learn the law. All right? They're going to be begging you to learn the law. All right? Order. The law is go back to order. All right? Instruction. Dictation. All right? Continue. Yep. Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow, surely endow her to be his wife. All right. So yeah, when uh, I, I, I believe when when Isaac, um, uh, when he when he was with uh, Rachel, um, I believe was it wasn't it Rachel who, who came on came on to him oh, first, oh, or was it was it was it no, the other uh, way it was a wife. It was a wife for was Isaac. A, it was a wife yeah. for Isaac. The servant, wife Abra Isaac, yeah. Abraham's servant, went to go find a wife for okay, Isaac. Okay, God, yeah. yeah, yeah. And what did Isaac do? You know, he didn't take her to no uh, crazy restaurant or give her up. No, he took her to that, you know, to that tent, man. All right. It say uh, Exodus twenty-two and seventeen. It says, if her fa father utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it, though. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you get a wife. Right? Now we said if you lie with her, so you already had sex. Yeah. This is why you gotta keep your daughters in. Right? You have to keep your daughters in. So if you entice her and they have sex, you're supposed to pay the father. So either way, you gotta pay the father. So according to the law, either way, you gotta pay the father. But now you got a daughter that's already been penetrated. Yeah. So that's fucked up. That's in the law. You gotta keep the daughters in. You gotta lie what yeah. Marty married. So yeah. whatever you gotta do, or keep 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 them in. Yeah. And nowadays, keep, keep them in. Yeah. And, now, and nowadays, even if you know you're in the truth, your brother in the truth, we don't have that type of authority over our children, man. Yeah, over our women, over our family, you know? period. Yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah. You know these, you know these children are aren't our children, man. Yeah, they belong to the state, pretty much. Yeah. You yeah, want to shoot them, with, shoot them up with drugs, and they come out born, newborn. Yeah. They want to circumcise them immediately. You're supposed to, by the law, say the eighth day. Yep. Circumcise on the eighth day, but they, you know, all of us are circumcised the same day, the same day. You know, so. But at least we're circumcised. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I believe the eighth day, I believe the, uh, the, the penis is, is more ripe for uh, surgery. I believe that's, that's what, the, uh, what it is. Versus newborn. Uh -huh. The eighth day is, is a better for surgery. Yeah. All right? So that's how you, you don't got to take a damn a woman out to a damn re, uh, a five star restaurant. Spend two fifty, four hundred. That's fucking stupid. This is why you guys are broke. <laughs> All right. We don't, most of us are not making one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. All right. Hundred K, hundred and thirty, and we're living well below our means. No, we might be making that, but the lifestyle we have is takes a lot of that up so we can't be afforded every four days a week going to a damn get prepared meals making the damn restaurant rich all right yes. this is why money goes into the so-called community and go right the fuck back out all right just leave these women alone just use them for, for whatever don't take them seriously i, I, I wouldn't even wouldn't even engage all right just leave them you look at them like wow okay then leave them alone all right you're going to women and the more humble and the more uh, think uh, family oriented, you know, more about the uh, so called uh, generation of wealth, but this kid is going to be destroyed. Had to have that mindset, not the mindset of eating at fucking restaurants every day. Right. Yeah. So, uh, go back to that article. So, continue on the article. It says an interesting fact dating permitted, uh, promoted cosmetics. Because one person says these are women didn't wear. Oh come! It says uh, at the outset of the 20th century, women could be arrested for dating. Men walking in the streets with women find them food and flowers were a new phenomenon. So the authorities didn't know how to react. It, resemb it resembled prostitution so much that they could charge women with it. Because it is prostitution. It resembled prostitution so much. And they could be arrested. It was uh, so uh, it was like a fact similar. Alright? Because it is. Because basically, 
you're getting together and you're spending money on somebody and you might not ever see them again. That's prostitution. Yeah. Basically, they're selling themselves. It means prostitution means to stand before, I believe. So you're standing, you at the date, spending, standing before, spending money. So you can either have sex or you cannot have sex with the money was spent. Yeah. That's, that's, that's why the scriptures, you know, is you know, very strict on who have a wife, all right? You know, it's not it's not really such thing as a divorce where you could separate from that woman. The, the, you know, depending on certain special circumstances. Mainly adultery. Mainly. Yeah, mainly mainly adultery or, you know, something like that. But, you know, divorcing your wife and her going to the next man immediately after she leaves you or oh, yeah. you leave her, that's 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 adultery, man. That's not, that's not really a thing. Yeah. All right, unless that man dies, all right, that woman has to stay with that with that man, or just you know be, be a single on her own. Right. Yeah, yeah. If, if a woman get fat, she lose a leg, an eye, you can't divorce her. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, that's why the scriptures say you can't divorce her. That's why the scriptures uh, have laws like that. You know, if you if you have a, a wife, you know that you hate, you know you can't just put her off. All right, and then you go to the to the streets. You know, you still gotta uh, you know keep her and take care of her. First I seven. believe uh, what's on? Uh, Jacob. Jacob had a, a, a beer. And, uh, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wanted yeah. Rachel, yeah. Yeah, he wanted Rachel. All right, but he, he didn't really like Leah like that. Even though that was his wife, all right, he couldn't just put her off. All right, so he, he kept he, he kept her. All right. So. Yeah, and that proves right there because Leah and Rachel were both like tens. But he, he liked Rachel better. That proved that in the coming uh, destruction, before, before, before the fire comes, the Mad Max time, you're going to have gorgeous women that are going to be just rejected. Right? They're, gonna, they're not, not going to be fit for marriage to, to, the, uh, to the elect man. Right? Because, they, because, because they're not of the elect. The only women that are going to be saved are going to be elect, the elect lady. You get 1 Timothy 2. Says an interesting fact: dating promoted cos cosmetics. Decent women didn't wear. It says decent women didn't wear makeup. The clean faces were the sign of nobility. Only actresses and prostitutes use cosmetics. There you go. That's why when you see women with the, uh, the extension hair weave, extensions, the wigs, and just certain clothes, stripper clothes, those go back to entertainers. Right. Tight pants, the ass sticking out and all that. The high heel shoes. Right. The hair, the makeup, the eyebrows, all that goes back to the uh, actors and entertainers. So they're basically dressing like uh, whores on TV. Dressing like actors. Because the actor has to wear a wig sometimes. So the, uh, the amount of stuff they're doing, they have to have their hair a certain way. So they would just put a wig on and make it quicker and faster. So they're, emu they're simulating, emulating actors and intent. So they basically think that they're these high-level uh, women, high-status women. Right? So you got a woman that's high-minded like that. They're not fit for, uh, for, for biblical marriage. Right? And the man makes the rules. The man leads. All right? And during these times, you're going to get second Ezra's. You're going to need men that have strong leadership skills and know the scriptures that are going to survive these coming uh, calamities. Right? It's not going to be safe to walk up and down the streets. You damn sure ain't going to go in the restaurant. What? Right. So it says the makeup industry wanted to popula uh, popularize their products, so they advertised them as a tool for making women more beautiful and feminine. In the 1920s, dating entered into the state of going out. This can be explained by the fact that young people want to be wanted uh so like it says this can be explained by the fact that young people became more in independent from their parents haters went to a dance or an amusement park probably the most popular day venue was a movie theater dating multiple people became a new trend during that period yeah some yeah that's how you know you got parents that actually care about your uh activity when, even when you get older in your early 20s, they're worried about you going out and spending night at other people's houses. That's how you know that there's at least some structure there, right, as a, you know, as a woman. 
You know, then you, you, know, you the children that you think are more incompetent with more rules and more, and you know, you treat your children different. You don't treat all your children the same. You know, sometimes you have a more competent child, you might give them a little more liberty. Right. See? So it says after World War II, it was popular for. Uh, it says it was popular to ask girls out. And that's how you know that America is going down when it comes to uh, spirit. Tells you uh, idolatry, uh, uh, blasphemy, the, uh, the pureness of Babylon. That's all. It used to be America used to run things a certain way, but now America's losing its moral fiber. That's what I'm trying to say. The, 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 the morality, the so-called righteous morality. All right, they're losing the, the appearance of that. And it started, I think, in the 20s or late 1800s. It says after World War II, it was popular to ask girls out over the phone. Dates yeah. often happen not tea a tea, but in public places among other young people. It says young people talk much to get to know each other better. If the format of a day require money, men always were the ones who paid. Yep, yeah, I right, stop there and read the scripture. Like Thirteen verse, fourteen verse. First Timothy two and fourteen. It says, and Adam was not deceived, but, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. That's the, only, that's the way the woman is going to be saved. All right? If she don't believe, when she sees the miracles, that might make her believe. Yeah. Psalms 110. So if you got a woman that's an unbeliever, uh, or, or you just didn't tell her anything, all right? Either one, you told her and she didn't believe, or you didn't tell her anything, so she don't naturally don't believe. When she sees the miracles, she's going to believe that she's of the elect. Right? More than likely, she, if, if she with you, she st and you, and you stay, and she stayed with you, she's probably of the elect. Right? But a lot of the, those women that divorced you, left you, for whatever reason, right? more than likely, they're not, they're not of the elect. Right? And, and the Lord caused that to happen. But more than likely, she was holding you back from... Uh, Coming to your, your full uh, power as uh, a man and a prophet. Uh, so the Lord had to had, uh, uh, let her go, so to speak. Uh, I continue with the. Uh, was that pretty much in an order? Yeah, it just goes into the time okay. All right, yeah, so dating was basically so similar to prostitution that you could be arrested for it. Because yeah. dating goes back to prostitution. So you really ain't supposed to be dating. You're supposed to just meet the girl. Meet the woman, all right? Talk on the phone, video chat, get together once, time, maybe twice, and y'all should be in a relationship or whatever is done, getting done. All right? All right, go, uh, that, that was it on uh, Timothy? Yeah, read the thir 13th verse. First Timothy 2 and 13, it says, For Adam was first born, then Eve. Actually, right, so Adam was first born, then Eve, so the woman's to help me. Uh, so the only way the woman's going to be saved is going to be a child bearing, all right, in a relationship with the elect man. So at the proper time, the elect lady, give me the, the elect lady, uh, second John or third John 1, first, first elect lady. Yeah, second John 1 and 1, take the elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have, have known the truth for the for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Okay, so you have elect women. Alright? Elect women that are that actually believe. Yeah. Right? And if you don't believe when you see the miracle, Psalms 110. Thy people shall be willing. Give me that, Psalms 110. Thy people shall be willing in the day of that power. Yeah. Got the Greek word for uh, elect. Yeah, go. We're gonna go into uh, Ezra's. Time. You saw it in the world, then coming destructions and all that. What? So it says the Greek word for elect within Second oh. John chapter one and one. It's the Greek word elect, uh, electos, which means pecked out, chosen, chosen by the Most High to obtain salvation through Hamashiach. Also says choice, select, i.e., the best of its kind or class. Excellent or excellence uh, preeminent 
best of his kind. All right, so you got the list of don't places not to go on the first date. All right, so if a woman agrees to that list, they're not of the elect. They're not of the elect. Their mind is totally uh, gone somewhere else. The only hope you might have is you believe when you see the miracles. And even if you believe, you got to be of the elect. All right? But we know the attributes of what a true third looks like. All right? And that's a prime example all right, of you not being of the elect, having a mindset like that. All right? And again, if you have a certain diet, that's, that's, we get that. But the point of that list was, is she's trying to say that you're not taking her to a cheap place or to a regular place where everybody else goes. And that's what she's ultimately trying to say. List of men that don't need to be dated. Oh yeah, I got that. Read that. It says men with toddlers or younger, men that live uh, with their mom, men that live with their baby mom, DL men, men that don't have a valid driver's license, men that bank with cash app, men that sag their pants, men that don't take care of their kids, men that those are all women, women, men that they they qualify for. Yeah. <laughs> that's all men that's all men they qualify for. You know like Cheesecake Factory, a Wingstop, yeah, yeah, yeah. or uh, a chain chain restaurant. Yeah, men will have uh, you know their uh, so called bank with bag. cash I'll bank with cash. They'll be in jail or you know, be in the streets. Uh, several you know? banks, you know, yeah. several banks. I only got one bank. Yeah. Men that bank with cash at. Okay. Hey, good. Again, these women don't qualify. Yeah, yeah. They don't qualify. They, 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 that, what, exactly what they, what they said. That's exactly what they, they qualify for. Yeah. What they, what they, that's projection. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, anything else? Yeah, it's more. Uh, they say men that don't own a suit, men that live in motels, <laughs> men that want to hold a couple of dollars until they get paid. Yes, they qualify for all that. <laughs> Those are the same women that qualify for all that. <laughs> Living in motels. And a book bag with hey. all your whole, all your belongings in there and shit. You go to the hotel, the hotel, the motel, hey. the motel. Yeah. He, he, that's who they qualify when for. When shit hit the fan, this, these gonna be the type of men they they gonna yeah. look for, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They not gonna be able to qualify for, you know, the, the true high value man. Which well, matter of fact, they can go take the chip. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they can go take the chip, yeah. and that's no guarantee that you even gonna get resources. Yeah. You saw the devil anyway. You could die before you get to the uh, the green zone, where they got the MREs, the meal meals ready to eat. just read in Isaiah 13 and 12 to read it again it says I will make a man more precious and fine gold even a man that golden wedge of all fear yeah that's the that's the most precious gold on the earth golden golden wedge of all fear like, uh, the ashes or something like that all fear I mean, that's the gold that was in, in a, like the new world yeah, yeah. even in America the islands or whatever the Caribbean islands America yeah, it means uh, reducing the ashes. The ashes. That's the gold of the new world. Yeah. All right. So, the most precious gold on earth. All right. That's what men of the elect are going to be worth. Yeah. What we looked at as shining like the sun. Yeah. I got the Hebrew word. Yeah. So, so the Hebrew word for precious oh, yeah. is the yeah. yeah. Which means to esteem, be prized, be valuable, be Pride. precious, Who's a prize, man? Huh? be costly, be appraised. Be appraised. Yeah, so something that's completely priceless. And val or literally valuable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Valuable. Yeah, so the woman's not the prize. So basically, you really, uh, it, I could, it's good for entertainment. Bitches saying what they want and all that. Pretty much live decently. But, you know, you gotta just make that. Yeah. Half the tax is talking about. And live okay. Right? So if you're not, if you are focused on just getting money and living a good life, you're not out of your left. Right? You gotta be converted to heal and put that shit off. That's gonna be you should get down. It's good, it's good to just to make money be uh, business like and all that. But you do that, and you understand what the will of the Lord is. You gotta go. You gotta do the work. Don't forget your first love. But the women, they're just, they just—they they, they're not scriptural. They believe they believe this kingdom is going to continue to come. That's not. That's not it. You gotta have rooted and grounded. Get that precept too. But you are you know what your definitions? Yeah. Precept. Look at Psalms 110. Just thinking rooted and grounded. 
This is Psalms 110 and 3. You say, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. All right, look up voluntariness. Uh, willing. 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 So voluntariness. Willing, willing, then this is like something like voluntariness. Voluntary. We already know what that means. You voluntarily coming to you, bending unto you, begging you. Men and women, not just women. Men are going to be begging too. They're going to be fucking starving. It's coming to them. All right. They're going to be wanting fruit juice. 100% fruit squeezed blackberry juice. Squeeze apple juice. Squeeze blackberry juice. Squeeze apple juice. They're going to be wanting that. All right. They're going to be wanting food. They're going to be wanting roasted chicken. They're going to be wanting greens, vegetables, dried fruit, nuts and berries, balsamic dressing. They're going to be wanting all that stuff. Hard boiled eggs, steak. Right. Yeah. They're going to be wanting it. And they, look, and if you're not of the elect, you ain't going to get it. All right? What? Yep. That word, Hebrew, uh, nada bra, it's a volunta voluntariness, free will offer. Free will, voluntary offer. So, yeah. Voluntariness, yeah. You're going to be willing to, uh, to be obedient, uh, to follow instructions. Thy people shall be willing. So that means men and women. Thy people, not just women. Men and women. Thy people shall be willing to follow. Mainly the other, the other elect. All right? And you have other ones that are not, not elect. They're going to be willing too. But if you ain't of the elect, it don't matter what the hell you do. All right? Sing songs, dance, jump up and down like a damn gorilla. Do tricks and all that. If you're not of the elect, you are not going to be saved. All right? The Lord is going to, how shall we rise out when we are those men? The Lord is going to give us the power to, 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 to distinguish who's who. And we're going to move forward from safety to safety. The name of the Lord is Strong Tower. And right run into it and it's safe. You know, whether we gotta be on the run, we're here, we're here, whether the chariot's gonna pick us up, put us down, like he did Philip, when he baptized the Israelite eunuch from Ethiopia, and he disappeared out of his sight. Now the chariot that picked him up, made him disappear. Alright? So what the Yahweh shot? They say secure like that. When the Maccabees got guarded by the angels during the battle, you're not of the elect. The Lord ain't gonna protect you. You're gonna be out there exposed with no, no, with no, uh, no hedge. Right. Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. It's going to be a lot of people that was going to be that shame, that regret. Right? Men and women. Right? Because you, you got men walking past us saying, saying what we're doing. Right? We're trying to wake our people up. Right? You know, uh, uh, you know about Shimei Amashad. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to wake up the elect. You see, you, you, got, you got other women coming past, being proud, right, and things of that nature. So once the shit hit the fan, man, you know, they both going to be ashamed because they know what they should have been doing, you know? Spiritual development, you know? Living a quiet life, you know, making your money, building people, working for that you done. Come out on your camp day, all right? If you're a woman in the, in the faith, you're watching, watching your videos, you know, and being a uh, so-called good wife, all right? Not being a okay. Have to be 
trained in a certain way so we can continue the, the, the things that we learn. We're all trained uh, from the beginning. Ideas of hell, going to hell forever. Had to put that shit off. Become a new man. And it took a long time before we get in it. Alright? So, uh, what did I say it again? Contrite. Contrite yeah. spirit? Yeah, read that. Yeah, Psalms 34. Look at those, look at those words. Yeah. yeah, Psalm 34. Yeah, that's a good chapter. And uh, 17, it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, yeah. and deliver them out of all their troubles. Mm -hmm. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Yeah, he broke it. He broke it. Contrite means Hebrew word. Dakot. Dakot meaning dust. Dust. Yeah, just dust, dust, crushed. Crushed, yep. Literally powder or figuratively contrite. Okay, so we have to, to serve the Lord with that. I mean, our minds are continuously operating on you know, how we can do uh, better. And as you mature, you develop a system be able to easily get that done yeah. you know but when you're young you, you kind of don't know what to, how to easily get that done when you're younger it's kind of like you gotta figure things out and you gotta make time and all that now as you mature in the faith you already have the apparatus already set up so basically you just fall right into it and get it done you know that's the same thing with a lot of things you know you gotta figure out when to go grocery shopping if you have a system already set up, you already know how to do it. You know? Yep. Also it goes back to the verb. Literally dakat or dakaa. Yep. Well it'll be dakat. Meaning the crush. It says literally uh be broken, break in pieces, bruise, destroy, beat the pieces. Yep. So yeah, literally to be crushed, to be broken in, in spirit. So right. read that verse, that verse again, Tom. Yeah. Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, nigh into the look of nigh. 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 You got it? Yeah, I got it. You go back to where you are for the most part. God, so, God, it says Hebrew word for nigh is kwabrawab, meaning. Yeah, near a place of time, a personal relationship, kinship. Personal relationship. Yeah, you gotta have a personal relationship with Yahweh Shah. Right? As a man, right? Well, as, as an Israelite, but you, with your woman, you have to serve, serve the husband. Right? Follow what the scriptures say. I'm sure you're asking there's no questions. Right? The are already available with the free. As long as you can read, you right? can serve your husband correctly. I got one good one. It's in Isaiah. So Isaiah 66 and 1. Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? It says, For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord Yahweh. But through this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth on my word. Right. Yeah, give me Corinthians 11 and 1. And trembleth, trembleth, trembleth at my word. Yeah, so you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta be focused. Right, like the fireplace, like focus on, go back to the fireplace of earth. And you gotta intensely focus on what your duty is in the faith. So it says Hebrew word going back to the root word harad, meaning literally what to tremble, quake, move about, be afraid. And it says that be anxiously careful. Well, most women in America, most men, they don't even have that uh, mindset to, to uh, serve the Lord with fear and trembling, serve 
Corinthians 11 and 1, be ye followers of me, even as I am, even as I also am of Hamashiach. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Yeah, and keep the ordinances. I mean, the words that we say, the uh, prophecies, the different the doctrines, keep them, hold on to them, practice them, remember them, and they're going to come to pass. But the prophecies, the law of order, you know, keep them and absorb them and become uh, a willing servant of Yahweh, 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 Shai. All right, the father Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, the son. You can't just be saying Yahweh's name, all right? But Yahweh, Shai, you can't get to Yahweh, all right? You gotta, you gotta serve Yahweh, Shai. Yahweh, Shai, Lord will. You say Lord will, that's Yahweh, Shai, not Yahweh. Lord will is Yahweh, Shai, all right? Good. Verse three. And say, what I will have you know that the head of every man is Hamashiach, and the head of the woman is is the man. Yeah, the head of the woman is the man. That's the order. What? And the head of Hamashiach is Yahweh. Is Yahweh. All right. Now, if you really think you're righteous, you would have your head covered too. You're not righteous, if you really believe that. You go under the authority of your husband. Go down to uh, power overhead. Has to have a head cover. But that's our tradition. I right? can look up our uh, ecstasy and how we go down to what it was talking about prior to the woman covering her head before it cuts the story to a husband. Yeah. Lord, read it first. It says, uh, First Corinthians 11, we'll start at 8. It says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Yeah, the man is not of the woman, but the woman comes from the man. What? Say neither was the man created for the woman, but right. the woman for the man. The woman was created for the man. All right, as a help me. What? It says, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. All right, so that was, that was a tradition that the Lord sent down to men. The woman is supposed to cover her head. Right, and that shows the authority of the, uh, the husband. All right, so look up uh, power, exousia, and go down to the bottom. Yep. It says proprietary on uh, I got you. So the Greek word for power within 1 Corinthians 11 and 10 is, uh, yeah, um, exosia, meaning a sign of the husband's authority over his wife, i.e. the veil with which propriety required a woman to cover herself. Yeah, and you look up old pictures, even in America, you'll see them white, even white women with their head covered. Damn, uh, uh, dresses with the apron over it, and I have a head cover. Like the uh, Amish, the Mennonite people, they uh, you see, all see them with their head cover. Yeah, and I got a quick uh, account. Yeah, go ahead. It says Susanna one and thirty one. Now Susanna was a del very delicate woman, and and uh, Eutychus to behold. Because when your hair is uncovered, then you think you're probably uncovered out in the world. All right, you're probably a prostitute. It says, and, come on. it says, and these uh, wicked men commanded to cover, uncover her face, for she was covered, that they might be filled with her beauty. Yeah. See? And we're covered. And that was a war, and she was a uh, royalty, right? That was uh, what country we went to? Uh, uh, Susanna. Susanna. Yeah, I think it says they, uh, they, they yeah, I guess the, royalty. yeah, I guess the wicked men, you know, trying to basically take Susanna. 
you know, take her. And then, you know, when they failed that, they, they, they try to basically condemn her, you know, uh, basically within, uh, before the judges in Israel. So, you know, um, for their lust's sake, you know, they want to basically uncover Susanna right there. Right, yeah, that's why she, as a woman, be guided to a husband by so-called community. You know, your, your group or whatever. In biblical, not on some of this useful fuck around. You know, biblical, you know, for a long-term relationship, which is marriage, all right? Biblical, all right? And you don't have to do anything elaborate have a ceremony and nothing like that. We're not in those times where people have to have an elaborate ceremony. All right, you get together, you got us married. All right, don't break up, follow his orders. You should, you should be a confident man. You should be able to have spiritual eye to see. All right, and if you don't, you got to get somebody else that does. You have to pick out a man for you. All right. So where are we going to? Uh, uh, Ezra's? Six. You saw the end of the world. And then as there's uh, 15, as there's 16, home invasions, get the home invasion scripture, but as uh, 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 six and nine, I believe it's seven, as six and nine. Yep. Six. So it's the end. So it says second well, Ezra's. Well, I thought of a little God, second Ezra's six and seven, it says, then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first? And the beginning of it that followeth. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world. Genesis 25. Cut. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Cut. The hand of the man is betwixt the heel and the hand. Other question, Ezra's, ask thou not. Yeah, so when he grabbed. Uh... Jacob grabbed Esau's heel, all right, in Genesis 25, all right, we can read the account, read the account. That represented uh, Jacob having dominion at the end. The heel represents the end. Uh, Jacob having dominion at the end. And that also goes into Genesis also. That's like who's the who's that like that. I mean, it, it, it right here. It says Genesis 25 and 23, the Lord Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Yep. And the one people should be stronger than the other people. And yeah, the elder... Jacob's gonna be uh stronger than Esau in the end. Well, in the beginning and in the end. But in the middle, Esau is what's gonna reign. What? Yep. It says, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right. The elder, which is Esau, shall serve the younger, which is Jacob. Right. Why well, the scripture say, them no younger than I have been Christian. Is that Job? Yeah. Them I would not have seven dogs in my flock. Job 30. Get that. And so Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Oh, did we have it says about the hill yet? Uh, not yet. Okay. It says Genesis 24, or 25 and 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, it says, Behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment. And yeah. they Meaning that the, the, he was uh, the blood shone through his skin. All right. And they called his name Esau. It says, and and after that came came out his brother. It says, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. That's what it means. Jacob took hold of Esau's heel. So they were fighting in the womb, and that represents Jacob in the end having dominion over Esau. Right. That's why Esau, he stole our identity. Right. He called himself uh, uh, the tribe of Judah, which he's not. He's a, he's a uh, nation of Edom from his various different tribes. Right. Esau Edom, which was not chosen. Neither was Ishmael, which they make up the Arabs. Which Arab means mixed. So that means some of them are Ishmael, some of them might be Assyrians, Elam, Esau. And mi Arab means mixed. Syria, Syrian, Aram, 
right. That they might someone might even be a uh, Kush. Yeah, it says, and after that came out his brother, it says, came his brother out, and his hand took on him, took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and, and Isaac was three score years old when he buried them. Three score years old? Uh, 20, 60. So he was 60 years old when he had his first children. Right. So don't let the, the, the women out there on the internet tell you that you, you, don't, you don't have time to produce children. They got a time, finite time. Yep. You don't. All right. And if you stay healthy, exercise, take the right herbs, you can still get up and you can still explode in the damn womb. All right. But you gotta, because the weak earth is weaker now, so men got weaker, so we gotta do more things. But even Jacob didn't have to have uh, the mandrakes, mandrakes to, uh, to decrease that sexual desire. So he can uh, lay with, with, with his uh, wife. All right? It was so-called aphrodisiac. All right? Women had the, the timeline. Men, Isaac gave, gave birth to his first child, children, at 60 years old. All right? Women, they got till 35, 40, maybe. I believe when they go to the, the mid, early 30s, that's when they start to uh, go into uh, men menopause, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So the timeline of a man is like five times longer than a woman. Really, really infinite. Until as long as he can get an erection and he got his stones, he can expel his uh, seed. Yeah, because you know? what, sperm's created every, you know, literally every day, right? Yeah, and I think every 15 minutes, I heard such testosterone is released into your uh, blood. Like every 15 minutes. Flow, and then you wait for a while and you get and it goes back right? even if you don't you know you know uh, explode so to speak you go through cycles every 15 minutes man with the right? so I mean you may have what lots of dodgers right basically get in real quick Yeah, it says in uh, Genesis 19 and 30, and Lot went up out of uh, Zoar and, and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zoar, and he dwelt in the cave, he and his two daughters. It says, and the firstborn said unto the younger, our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in oh, unto <laughs> us after the manner of all the earth. And of course, we know what, you know, they were doing, um, well, you know, incest, of course, before the, the Lord, of course, I mandated that incest was not to happen anymore. You know, of course, that was happening back then because, of course, uh, the earth was in a state of it needing to be popular. But, yeah. Yeah, I so, believe it says uh, testosterone levels oscillate every 15 to 20 minutes in men. Yeah. And also follows daily seasonal and annual rhythms. 24 hours. Men have a 24 hour cycle where their testosterone levels are highest in the morning and lowest at night. So we got a 24 hour cycle. Women got like a 30, 30 day cycle, something like that. Yeah, menstrual. Ours is a 24 hour cycle. Yep. So our vitality is still greater. So I mean, we, we're technically we're biologically and spiritually. Uh, superior. That's the way we were. Well, that's the way we were created. This is why we were uh, designed to lead. Right? And, and and the only women that we're going to lead, and the only men we're going to lead, are, are, are men and women that want to be uh, led. Right? That are that, that are going to take orders, follow instructions. Go ahead, Chief. Thank you. Uh, we're done with our others. Six. Yeah, that's good. Others fifteen. We got the bride room going to be destroyed. In Matthew 24. Man talks down the
want you to build upon the oh. The Brogdon's, don't, don't yeah, the Brogdon's. The Brogdon scripture, right? Yeah. And Ezra's. So it says, Second Ezra chapter 16 and 32, it says, And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old, and her waste and her, it says, And all her paths shall grow full of thorns, because no man shall travel uh, there through. The virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall be shall mourn, having no helpers. Yeah, they're going they're going because they're not of the elect. All right, the ones that mourn are not of the elect. I right? say the ones who are the elect that are going to be mated with the elect men. All right, but the majority are going to be mourning because they're going to be getting ravished and, and uh, taken to uh, work. In men's houses, you know, forced labor. Right? They're gonna do whatever they want to you in there. You know, that house or holes in the wall or in the damn woods. Right? Gone. So it says. They're gonna mourn. That, that's like a, a bitter, a sighing, cry, sadness, great sadness, not nothing lightweight, like heavy, deep despair. Mourning. Yeah, I mean, what? In, uh, Matthew chapter 24 and 30, it says, When the Lord comes back, all the shops of the earth will mourn. When you get that word for mourn, it literally means to be well, to lament, you know, to well. So those, those are literally what? You know, strong forms of, of weeping. Right? Yeah. It says, Second Ezra 16 and 34, And the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. Yeah, exactly. So in the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed so again you know these hey the, the elect woman you know i mean the non-elect woman the the elect of course the women that are not chosen by the lord you know they're they're literally going to lack protection have no literally have no protection at all so to read it again it says second measure chapter 16 and 34 in the war shall the bridegrooms be destroyed and their husbands shall perish of famine. Hear now these things to understand them, ye servants of the Lord. It says, Behold, the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Yep. It says, Behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, within two compass her womb with pain, which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Exactly. So the Lord commanded us to receive these things, to, to literally think upon these things that, that are near to come. You know, what the scriptures also say to be circumspect, right? Yeah. Because literally, what, the, the times that we're in right now are evil. The days that we're in are evil, right? So that's why it's important to, to take, to literally, um, to, to apply these scriptures and, and also to consider these prophecies that are to come. So it says, 2nd Ezra chapter 16 and 39, it says, Even so shall not the plagues be slack that come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Yeah, many are a, temp a temporary inhabitant, right, ready to leave, ready, ready to go uh, to the kingdom. All right, so you basically you, you you understand you're moving forward in life, knowing that your stay is not going to be here. All right, pilgrim. Look up pilgrim. Definition of pilgrim. Newcomer. Uh, I forget exactly what it means. Yeah, it says uh, pilgrim in the etymology. Where would you get a good definition from? Got a uh, scripture in the meantime. Yeah, go, go. This is Luke 9 and 62. When Yahweh Shah said unto him, No man have been put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. Yeah, so you got to be consistent in teaching. Or you got to have a spirit in you. The spirit in you is going to think that's going to keep you uh, active, uh, you know, mentally. If somebody telling you to do it, it really ain't going to do, do too much. You really gotta, it really got to be in you. 
We're gonna have higher days, we're gonna have low days. But once you become familiar with the process, you'll be able to be, become an effective teacher, right? even when you feel weak. So it says Pilgrim, going back to the 12th uh, or 1200, or yeah, the 1200s, a person traveling to a holy place as a penance or to discharge some vow or religious obligation or seeking some miracle or spiritual benefit. Yeah, so we're pilgrims. We're, 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 we want the kingdom to come, we're waiting for the kingdom to come, and we're not trying to prevent a third world's war. We're not praying that a third world's war don't take place. Now, we do believe in uh, Armageddon, Armageddon. All right? Because when the Lord is going to bring that, but God of the Bible, Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, which is not, that's not his name, he's the one that's going to bring war. All right? Yep. And that was, that was good. Uh, was there more on that, uh, Ezra? Uh, I know there's a lot more, but uh, we'll read a few more verses. Gone. You will go to uh, the Gospel. It says, Second Ezra chapter 16 and 41, He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, right. and he that buyeth, as one that will lose. Yeah, pilgrims, meaning we're ready to receive the kingdom. At this time, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel? All right? So we know when the prophecies come to pass. Implant, the mark Esau has to put his mark on the whole world. He has to distribute it through the whole world. You know, within the uh, so-called civilized regions. You know? So when they receive that, when he about to fill his belly, then that's when the angels are going to come. When the persecution starts, that's when the angels are going to come to secure the elect of Israel and right? endow his servants with spiritual power. Yep. Right? But the scriptures also say that he that liveth his life shall lose it, but he that right. hateth his life shall gain it unto uh, life eternal. Yeah. Right? Basically paraphrasing. So it says, He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. Yeah, because all these things are temporal, right? In uh, Peter's, it says how literally all these things will be burned up in Babylon the Great. So all these things that we have right now, currently are literally temporal. Literally all the things you see in this land of America is, is temporal, man. It's going to be dust soon. It says, Second Ezra chapter 16 and 42, He that occupy the merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it, and he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, as if he should not reap, so also he that planted the vineyard, I see that shall not gather the grapes. Right, yeah, when you look up uh, Matthew, uh, Romans 7, that he had given the wife as though he had no wife, I believe that's in there, okay, Romans 7. He, you know, so, the prophets understood the spirit, all right, of how you're how you supposed to be to conduct yourself, all right? For them that had wives as though they had none, all right? So, so Ezra said the same thing. So obviously Paul knew that same spirit that was going to happen in the last days. All right? so, he knew about the, the, the coming destruction. Yeah, right? that's why the scripture says it's better to be in the house of mourning than the house of feasting. Because right? we're supposed to be in the spirit of mourning, you know, basically keeping a, a sober mindset, right? Yeah. A lot of these aches, you know, they completely fall out the truth and they go back into doing what they were doing, man. You know, becoming drunk again. You know, uh, spiritually drunk, right? So it says Romans 7 and Romans 7 Go oh, first Corinthians 7. This first Corinthians 7 28 or 29. First Corinthians 7 and 28 or 27 it says art thou loot or it says art thou bound unto a wife seek not to be loose it says art, art thou loose from a wife seek not a wife but if but and if thou marry thou hast not sinned and if a virgin marries she hath not sinned nevertheless such shall have trouble in the flesh but I spare you but this I say brethren the time is short it remaineth that, that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. 
and they that buy as though they possess not. Right. Yeah, so you got to be in a pilgrim spirit, ready to receive the kingdom and ready to move to, to receive that kingdom. All right. To receive that spiritual power. All right. And we receive the kingdom already spiritually because we know the knowledge of the truth. Uh, we have the truth. All right. Now you can hold up there. Uh, gospel. Yeah. What, what chapter are you in? I'm in uh, Luke 21 and I'll start at 25. All right. Yeah. Luke 21 and 25, it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity. The stress of nations, you got Gaza, Ukraine, Russia, different proxy wars, earthquakes, floods. Good. Yep. It say with perplexity, the perplexity. sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Yeah, that's how stressed men are going to be. So men are that stress. Imagine how stressed out women are going to be. Uh. You just read in Ezra that they're going to be mourned because they had no husbands. All right? And you know the uh, Judah, they're going to be, no women are going to be mourning because they, they're the main ones that don't have uh, no men because they're too damn uh, masculine. And they, and they try to uh, emulate the white, the so-called white, the Edomite woman. All right, with the blonde hair and the weave and shit. All right? So that's like self-hate. I think that's self-hate. So they don't have no men because they don't have the spirit to humble themselves to be uh, God-fearing women. And that's fine. We're seeing them in the kingdom. All right? Men's hearts failing them for fear. So we know the only people that are going to survive this are going to be the elect. All right? And there's going to be a lot of, going to be millions of casualties. Right, some of them are going to take that chip and get some salvation temporarily, and some aren't. Some of them are going to die. All right, remember, this is a totalitarian system that's going to be set up. All right, so Esau can do anything. All right, he can have you in doing anything All right, with that uh, implant. Right. Uh, more? Yeah, verse 26, men's heart filling them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven, heaven shall be shaken. And then Esau, yep. Esau, Edom, their, their uh, power structure. Yep. And then yeah, shall they, they which is their law, their rule, their order. All right, that's their power. Yep. And then, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass. Then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draws nigh. Alright, our redemption. Alright, I mean, our, our salvation. Alright, you grab something? You know, uh, I got it. First Thessalonians chapter 5. No, you can go. No. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 5 of 1, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that are right unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come in as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as shall bear upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day shall overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. It says, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Yeah, so we already know what's coming. Of course, the Lord woke us up to the shoe. You know, the Lord woke us up to these prophecies and, and literally gave us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding what the scriptures say in Isaiah chapter 33 and 6, how wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. That strength of salvation, basically, uh, basically paraphrasing. Right? So all these things that the Lord's given us through the Spirit is going to be enough literally to guide us and to protect us and then, uh, you know, within these upcoming times. That's why we're known as the children of light. It says we are not of, 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 it says we are not of the night nor darkness. Yeah, like, you know, these people who are asleep in this world and are obviously not um, coming back onto the truth, you know, for the, the Israelites. You know, the wicked Israelites who don't want to come back onto the truth. It says, verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Yeah, and the Lord got us up on our watchtower, you know, watching 
as, as watchmen, you know, are supposed to be watching for, you know, these, these uh, for, for evils to come. It says, and be sober. Verse 7, for they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Yep. Yeah. You get Isaiah 59, 19. What do you got? I got, I got something too. Uh, just, just going on with that. Uh, Luke 17 and 26. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the, the Son of Man. So what happened, you know, in the days of the flood, that's happening now. It say, they did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So these people are going to keep, you know, being in that darkness, all right, drunk with the ba Babylonian wine, all right, until they get destroyed. But instead of, um, you know, with the flood, you know, it's going to be through thermal nuclear destruction. Yeah, it's going to be through fire, nuclear fire. It's not going to be no regular bonfire that's going to hit Babylon. It's going to be a nuclear fire, man. What the literally, <laughs> the most potent type of energy. You know, hitting the soils of Babylon and Great, right? Yeah. It say, verse 28, Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they, they built it. So like, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So yeah. there you go. The same thing that happened in the flood with Lot, you know, you know, we, we warn you, I right, to, to repent. I right, warn you of, of, of the the destruction that, that's to come. All right, these people are gonna keep living their lives, all right? These women are gonna continue to be proud, all right, these men are gonna continue to be a uh, 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 wicked, all right? So, you know, they're gonna do that all the way until to the destruction. You know, just just like those examples, all right, but but this gonna be the uh the final and most devastating destruction, all right, until until you know the kingdom is established. Yeah. I yeah, I was about to get uh, Genesis, basically. Yeah, I'm trying to find. Get Isaiah 59 18. Okay. Yeah, Book of Isaiah 59, verse 18. Verse 18. It says, oh, Hold on, read what you got. You got it? Gone. Yeah, I got it. It says, I'm gonna read that last. Okay. It says, Genesis 18. So, when you really read this chapter, you know, Abraham is basically asking the Lord, Okay, so Lord, you know, when uh, basically the Lord gave him the information that, or the prophecy, literally, that Sodom and Gomorrah would be destroyed. You know, basically, uh, Abraham is asking, okay, so, you know, so if, if, if basically this amount of people uh, or uh, of uh, righteous people were in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, would you still destroy it? You know, considering that there's righteous people in this land. Mm -hmm. And basically, Abraham started from what? He was starting, okay, Lord, so it says, for a venture, this Genesis 18 and 24, for a venture, there be 50 righteous within the city, wilt thou also destroy and not spare? the place for the uh, 50 righteous that are there in it says that be far from thee to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked and the righteous shall be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of the earth do right it says and the Lord Yahweh said if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city then I will spare all the place for their sakes and then when you keep on going down Abraham even goes down to asking you know for uh if there's, you know, 10 people, or, you know, basically 10 righteous people within Sodom and Gomorrah, that the Lord was so destroyed. And the Lord, again, it says, so verse 32, and he said, O Lord, O let not the, it says, it says, and he said, O let not the Lord be angry, and I will yet, it says, and I will speak yet this once, for adventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10 sakes. So it goes to show you, even within like Babylon the Great, what like you know basically how shy himself said that only few shall be saved, right? Right. So, well, and America is going to be spared until all the all the elect are righteous are out. Yeah, exactly. You guys going to destroy it, and all and you have Israelites that are all over the earth on every continent. That matter of basically aren't destroyed. All right. So, but when the elect are lifted up, 
from the area of America, that's when America is going to be completely engulfed in, in hellfire. All right, with a grave fire, nuclear fire. As soon as the righteous leave. All right, so give me uh, 18 first, 59, 18. Start from there. Book of Isaiah 59 and 18. Say according to their deeds, according accordingly he will repay fury to his adversary, ad adversaries, yep. recompense to his enemies, yep. to the islands he will repay recompense. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west. Yeah, so the Lord is coming back for, for vengeance, recompense. Vengeance is mine, so, so he will repay. Alright? So the Lord's not coming back to uh, make peace with everybody. He's going to put them under his feet. What? So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. You know, all over the earth. What? When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Yeah, the enemy shall come in like a flood, but that didn't happen yet. All right. All right, well, you can say it happened, you know, during certain times and the Lord secured Israel, but it's going to happen again. All right, during these last, this last time. When the Lord is going to secure Israel again, like the Lord secured uh, Judah, uh, Mac Mac the Maccabees. All right, like the Lord secured Abraham. All right, and the nations are coming up against Israel, our ancient ancestors. All right, the Lord lifts up a standard. Now this standard, okay, is going to be the most powerful standard that ever existed on Earth before. All right, this is going to be a special standard. All right, because you're going to have 144,000 prophets that are going to receive power and that are at least going to be shielded all right it's like a force field around them and they're not going to be touched all right yeah yeah and i want to add because you know this time is literally the worst uh, last time yeah yeah worst, yeah it's worst. literally yeah the worst as it has been you know since the past right so he saw you know now he, he has his advanced technology you know he got his tank yeah he can he, see farther he can see through stuff he couldn't do that before yeah Yep, you know, see through walls and see, see from outer space. Yeah, you know, he got his, you know, basically all these uh, microwave weapons and stuff, right? Yeah. It's gonna literally, you know, give you a rail, heart attack. Rail guns, yeah. 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 Lasers. Just by, just by using some, you know, electromagnetic spectrum weapon. Yeah, right. or he can uh, put LSD on your doorknob. You can touch it and then he fucking overdose you. Go into the fucking house and die. Yeah. You do that. Yeah, you put it in your car, you can put it on your car handle. Esau can do that. He can just kill you. If he wanted, really wanted to kill you, he could. But the Lord has a, uh, a force field around us that's protected. Yeah, that's true. You know, Scripture yeah. said we, we should drink poison and live. So. Yeah, because yeah, you know Esau, you got his drones, man. He could easily just send a, a you know, yeah. completely 100% automated drone, you know, to take you up. Yeah. So yeah. literally, the Lord ha will have to rise yeah, up a standard. Reaper, Reaper uh, drone, yeah. Hellfire missile. That, that's a devastating missile. Yeah, yeah. man. Because uh, Esau would be doing that all the time, like taking out these certain celebrities and uh, things of that nature, whether it was a sacrifice that was going against the, the grain yeah. or agenda, so to speak. All right, you know, some, some weird way they just end up, you know, passing all of a sudden. Yeah, a lot of rock and roll uh, guys. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. They, they, what? they died. Yeah, they died. Old drug overdoses, mysterious, yeah. weird shit happened to them. But the difference is, the, the Lord ain't with them dudes, man. Yeah. So they don't got no no protection. So whatever Esau, yeah. you know, whatever way Esau chooses to, to destroy them dudes, yeah. I that that's that yeah. was just a lot, man. And then um, and Satan is another way of uh, well, rock and roll. That that's another way to worship Satan. Yeah. All those rock and roll guys, uh, Wayne Static, Lincoln Park, all them guys, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. David Drummond, Chester Bennigan, they all they worship Satan. And even yeah. a lot of them even talk about Satan in their uh, songs. Yeah. And they go right over people's heads. They're not joking about that shit. Yeah. They actually worship uh, Satan. They conjure him up to get better lyrics, get yeah. a better yeah. rhythm and all yeah. that. Yeah, get a better yeah, energy. Are going to, yeah, better energy. Yeah, What's that dude named uh, the date, uh, from the Doors? Michael uh, Morrison or something? Yeah. Morrison? Doors act, the Doors uh, main singer, I believe. Yep. They, they, Esau worshiped that guy. I forget his name from the Doors. Look up that guy's name. Something Morris. Doors. Uh, the Doors. Yep. They do that yep. modern, uh, modern times for uh, hip hop. Because you know hip hop is or rap music is like the number one genre. Jim, right Jim now. Morris. 
athletes. You know, we got certain athletes sell out. You know, we got that dude, Jim, Jimmy Butler, who was wearing that stuff. He probably going to have a breakout year or something, man. Yeah. All right, because he's doing them uh, left-hand type of sacrifice. And you got the new guy. They might count him. That dude they talking oh, about. Oh, Wimby. No, with the 7'5 seven, seven, dude from the yeah, Spurs. Wimby. Wimby. Wimby, yeah. Oh, Victor, nah, that dude, uh, he, he's... He, yeah, he's his name is Victor, Victor Wimbenyama. Victor Wimbenyama, yeah. But they yeah. just call him Wimby. Wimby? For sure, yeah. He's through already? Damn, he just Yeah, started. nah, because when, when, when did he get drafted? Uh, literally this year. This year? Right. You already going? Yeah, oh, you already rookie. got him? And yeah. they, they, and like, Tallest everywhere, the NBA, the NBA is hyping this dude up. He's blocking like, shots and shit. More than like, not even jumping and shit. Yeah, like on a level like nah, nah, hey, look, I'm telling you, if you go on his Instagram right now, man, he, he already looks like he got that, you know, feminine type of, like, a little bit, you know, creeping in. Cause yeah. you know, they, um, they to me, yeah. he's probably gonna yeah. start painting his fingernails. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, cause shit. think about it. You know, yeah. this guy he be taking pictures with. Well, you know, with uh, Will Ferrell. You know, basically all these guys, right? Yeah. But that dude, like, you know, cause cause Esau be setting these dudes up from birth. You know, to to, to do that type grooming of stuff. Them? Yeah, from yeah. Yeah, grooming them from birth to like, okay, you are gonna be in the NBA or you are gonna be this top top guy in the league. And the parents make a covenant with Esau. You yeah. know? Yeah, like look. I guess he's stretching, but it's not really weird. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, because he's super tall, so it's like, he's like a freak. That's why he's... Like, tall yeah, and tall, he's like pretty much like, like a freak, because he's not yeah, normal. He's not that's normal why he's person. so mobile and agile, because he, he's so flexible. Yeah. Double. Not a hair blonde, that's going to be a ritual. Yeah, that, that is a ritual. Yeah. But people doing fast statements, too. The blonde, not a hair blonde, but that is a, that is a, like a ritual you go through. The blonde, the dye the tips of your hair blonde, or dye your whole hair blonde. Cisco went through that, and the 90 Eminem went through that. Yep, yep. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of celebrities went through that. A little dirt. Yeah, when I finish that, yeah, dirt, yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a, verse 20, and the we believe in spiritual power. The Lord is going to secure his elect somehow. Somehow, yeah. some way, some of us, through the spiritual power, some of us going to get protected by angels. going to come down and protect us in the form of men. Might be in part of their glory. Who knows? I mean, brothers yeah. had had visions, and some of us gonna get that power. We gonna go up into the air. Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, guys, they are forty. Come. Oh, read, read it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Isaiah fifty-nine to twenty. And read, the read to the end. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression at Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee. And my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. Yes, the Bible didn't, the, the, the Bible, the prophecies didn't change. All right, not departing means not going to change. Same thing he said to Joshua in Joshua, the first chapter. Yeah. What? Nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed. Say the law of sacrifice. What? Say it the Lord from, from henceforth and forever. Yeah, the, the, the Lord didn't change. All right, so the standard... We believe the spiritual power of the Lord is going to secure his elect. Huh? Isaiah 40 and 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting power, the Lord Yahweh, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Hey, not Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is omnipresent and uh, omnipotent. What? It says he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yep. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Oh, Elijah. Elijah would go up into the chariots and then come down somewhere else. Elijah, Philip. So you have prophets that had uh, the Lord called them up and would take them to different places and set them back down. The Lord going to give us that same angel is going to be with us. The Lord going to do that for us. Yeah, teleporting. Yep. I I think I had two visions like that already. You got uh, yep. the one, of course, prophet who went to Daniel, right? Oh, yeah. That took, they gave, uh, that Hosea gave him food or whatever. Food? Yeah, so I think Hezekiah. Hezekiah, Hezekiah gave, gave him uh, food, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so we, how do you do that? The angels picked him up and put him down. You can get it, but uh, yeah. finish reading that. Matter of fact, uh, you you get that uh, get Isaiah 40, the last two verses. What verse you want? Uh, 29. 29, and then you find that, that account. From 39. 39? Uh, 40? Which, Isaiah 40 and 30. 40 you 30. see the account again? No, no, no. no. You, you, you read that. He'll find the account. Oh, Isaiah 40. Oh, read read Isaiah 40. Yeah. 30, yeah. 40 and 30. Yeah. All right, go ahead. And then we'll close it out after that. Spiritual power. Because the Lord is going to secure us. All right. He can give, he can give us spiritual power. We, like Elijah caught fire down. Bob B, you know, the prophet, uh, that fire come down from heaven. 
All right, he can let, make us see things that are not being seen by normal people. He can phase our vision to a different wavelength. We can see stuff that the other people ain't seeing. Yeah, basic paraphrasing. Yeah, how was shy so that you see things that I do, you should do greater. Basic yeah, paraphrasing. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. We can start hearing things that other people ain't hearing. Okay. You know. Yep. This uh, huh? book of Isaiah 40 and 30. Huh? It says, "Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall." But they that wait upon the Lord shall yeah, renew. Keep, keep his word, follow his commandments, mm -hmm. follow his word, carry it out. The law of sacrifice done away with. Yahweh Shah is our uh, pacifier. That's yeah. secure our salvation. We understand the prophecy, we believe him, and we wait for him to come. All right? The, Lord, the, the, the rules are not a terror unto good works, so we prophesy until they are a terror unto good works, and then we go in, go in the height. All right? And you wait for the, the word of the Lord to come to us, like Hosea. Right. And then you got to receive the, the, word, the word, go ahead. Isaiah 40 and 31, what? it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Come on. All right, yeah. Mount up with wings like eagles. Ah. So you're going to have... Israelites that are, that are of the elect that are going to receive spiritual power that are going to receive that are going to be nigh to the Lord and the chariot that's going to take take them up all right we'll be able to call them and the chariot is, is transported into transmission all right into transmission we're going to be able to go up come down any, anywhere in Babylon Yeah, I believe so. Man up with wings like eagles. All right. Elijah, it, Elijah did that all the time. Was it in the uh, apocryphal? Yeah, man, because it says right here, Daniel four. I think that's the rest of uh, yeah, the rest of Daniel, I think. Yeah. yeah. To man up with wings like eagles. All right. You can get a. Uh, You believe, you believe the works that I do? Greater shall you, shall you, uh, shall you do? And greater works shall you do? All right? Because the Lord, because he goes to the Father. All right? So the Lord is going to, uh, thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. All right? You got it? Right. Yeah, the people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Meaning that when, when Yahweh shy gives his elect that spiritual power whatever it may be it may be call an angel okay. uh take us to another part of babylon all right okay. bring back food supplies all right uh make uh water repair out thin air uh the oil multiply food multiply breaking bread breaking uh fish or uh flesh steak into one that one steak we multiply it to a, a thousand and live in the damn woods for two weeks it's the book of John 14. We'll start at 11. Yep. It say, "Believe me that I am in the Father, and the and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake." Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Yeah. So we're going to do great works also, just like Yahweh shot. Alright. Yes. Go. Uh, you got the account? Yep, Bell and Dragon. Right. So it says, Bell and the Dragon, this in the Apocrypha, an extension of uh, the book of Daniel. It says, the Bell and the Dragon, it says, uh, chapter 20, 29, it says, So they came to the king and said, Deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house. Now when the king saw that they pressed him sore, being constrained, he delivered Daniel unto them who cast him into the lion's den, where he was six days. And in the den there were seven lions, and they had given them every two days uh, two carcasses and two sheep, which then were not given to them, to the intent they might devour Daniel. Now there was in Jewry a prophet called Habakkuk, Habakkuk. it says, who had made pottage and, and had uh, broken bread in a bowl, and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, 
Go carry the dinner that thou hast into Babylon unto Daniel, who was in the lion's den. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon, neither do I know where the den is. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him, it says, and bare him by the hair of his head, and through the vehemency of his spirit, led, it says, set him in Babylon over the den. And Habakkuk cried, saying, O Daniel, Daniel, take the dinner which the Most High has sent thee. And Daniel said, If thou hast remembered me, O Lord, or O power, now that hast thou forsaken me, or forsaken them that seek thee and love thee. Yep, that's how the angels grab you. They grab you by your, by your head and you just go up. Yeah. It's a transmission. Or he might make you experience the whole journey. Who knows? Yeah, and, huh? and look, it says, verse 39, So Daniel arose and did eat, and the angel of the Lord set Habakkuk in his own place again immediately. Immediately. There you go. Yeah. Go. Just like that, just boom. Teleport. Yeah. 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 So we'll end the lesson there. Uh, Hope your brothers are edified. Shalom, next lesson. Shalom. Shalom.